JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Roger Stoner mines gold in discuss with Olympic record. Jamaica's Roger Stoner delivered the country's first gold medal at the Paris Olympics. The 25-year-old, competing in the men's discuss, secured the gold in record-breaking fashion as he threw an Olympic mark of 70 meters on his fourth attempt. World record holder Mikolas Alenko of Lithuania had to settle for the silver medal with his mark of 69.97 meters. Australia's Matthew Denny took the bronze medal as he produced a championship best effort of 69.31. Jamaica's other representatives in the final, Travis Michael, finished ninth with his mark of 65.61 meters, while Ralph Ford Mullins was 10th, achieving a mark of 64.97 meters. Alleged gang leader fatally shot by police in St. James. A man who the police say was the leader of a gang in St. James was fatally shot on the weekend during an operation in Bickerseth in the parish. He is Romario Sargent, otherwise called Sarge, the alleged leader of the Romario Sargent criminal network. It's reported that the police team was on patrol duties in the Camp Road area of Bickerseth in search of wanted men. On reaching a section of Camp Road, Sargent was seen in a yard with a gun in his waistband. The police reportedly disembarked the service vehicle and identified themselves. The police say Sergeant removed the gun from his waistband and pointed it at them. The team discharged their firearms, hitting Sergeant. A .45 pistol was taken from him. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Two killed in confrontation with police in Spanish Town. Two men were fatally shot in Jones Avenue, Spanish Town, St. Catherine on Wednesday morning after they allegedly engaged the police in a gun battle. A Smith & Wesson Springfield firearm with a magazine containing two 9mm cartridges was seized. Senior superintendent in charge of Era 5, Christopher Phillips, said a police and military team carried out a cordon and search operation in an area known as Backlands sometime after 6 a.m. While on the operation, they entered a premises and men opened gunfire from a dwelling house there. Uh, the police returned fire. One man fell and the other ran to the rear of the house where he engaged the police in a gunfight and was shot. One gunman made his escape through the perimeter fence to the back. The two injured men were taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where they were pronounced uh, dead. The deceased is suspected to be one Orlando Davis uh, who goes by the name Sun Sun or Blacks, a person of interest in multiple murder and shooting cases the second individual remains unidentified uh, i just want to use this opportunity once more i've done it earlier but to urge persons on the police wanted list or who are persons of interest in ongoing investigations to surrender themselves at the nearest police station suspected drowning of five-year-old girl at river and saint mary the castleton police are probing the suspected drowning of a five-year-old girl in the Wagwater river in saint mary on tuesday Information received is that the child and her mother were part of an Independence Day trip up the river. It is reported that at about 4.30 p.m. the child went missing and during a search, she was found submerged in the river. Meanwhile, over in Manchester, the Alligator Pond police have launched an investigation into a case of suspected drowning at God's River in the parish on Tuesday. That is 61-year-old mechanic Robert Foster of Mandeville. It is reported that at about 1.30 p.m., Foster went for a swim at the popular river. He reportedly got into difficulties and drowned. The body was removed. Investigations into both incidents are ongoing. Cocaine seized by police in Havendale, St. Andrew. Five arrested. Five men are in custody. In connection with the siege of a significant quantity of cocaine in Havendale, St. Andrew, on Tuesday, two motor vehicles were also seized. The arrests and seizure were made during an anti-narcotics operation by a team of police officers from the Farms and Narcotics Investigation Division, FNED. It supported that FNED officers, with support from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, raided the premises, resulting in the arrest of the men and the seizure of a number of netted bags containing cocaine. Superintendent Sam Blake, head of the Farms and the Narcotics Investigation Division, said the operation has put a dent into a drug trafficking network. As the investigation intensified into this matter, our current assessment is that this arrest and the seizure represent a significant impact on the operation of this trafficking group. FNED will continue to focus its assets on those syndicates and individuals 
posing the greatest threat to the Jamaican state, he warned. The names of the suspects are being withheld, pending further investigation. Recruiting foreign teachers should be the last resort, says Ware. First Vice President of the Jamaica Association of Principals and Vice Principals, Linton Ware, says the Ministry of Education's efforts to source educators from countries such as Nigeria, Ghana, the Philippines and India to fill the teacher gap should be a last resort. The country has been grappling with a shortage of teachers, especially in maths and the sciences. This has forced the ministry to employ various methods to assist schools, including an expanded international recruitment program. But where is concerned about difficulties in communication that may arise among students and teachers from other countries? I know because I would have had individuals from, from other countries. Um, I had individuals, three or four individuals from India, and that was a challenge. It took some time for the students to understand, you know, what it is that they were saying. Mm -hmm. So I know we're going to have the language, language barrier. And that is why, for me, I am saying we need to explore the other options that are available. Then those individuals who are coming from, from the different countries, that should be the very last resort. Commission spot for police crackdown in Trial Heights. In a dramatic turn of events on Monday afternoon, a surprise visit by Police Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake and his team led to the apprehension of two men at premises in Trial Heights, St. Catherine. The site had become a hotbed of criminal activity with a notorious so called post atop a two story building. The Police Commissioner's visit came a day after a fierce shootout between the security forces and a member of the One Order Gang, resulting in the deaths of gang members Zimor Geddes and his associates, Akil Hales and Jervis Barrett. Senior Superintendent of Police, Upton Nicholson, command of the St. Catherine North Police, revealed that the two men picked up during Monday's visit will be processed to determine if they are involved in any criminal activities. The men were not expecting to see us after yesterday's operation, so they were surprised, Nicholson said. They were unable to account for themselves and their reason for being at the premises. So we took them in. I will process them to see if they are featured in any criminal activities. The operations catalyst, Geddes, who was killed on Sunday, was suspected of multiple murders and shootings. Hales, 21, and of a Seaford St. Thomas address, was wanted on charges of arson and malicious destruction of property, while Barrett, 33, of Trial Heights, was a hospital worker. Barrett's death shocked many, including his co-workers, one colleague, request anonymity, express disbelief. We never know him involved like that. He have two kids. No him gone left them, the colleague said. He was at issue the chilling threat on social media, writing, at 32 in a clip, 15 for JDF and 17 for celebration. Money done pangona obia. Nicholson also addressed concerns about the police's focus on gang activity, emphasizing their impartiality. We are a professional police and we go after gangs regardless of their affiliation, he stated citing a recent incident involving members of the Klansman gang. He urged other wanted individuals to surrender peacefully, warning them against resisting arrest. As the investigation continues, Nicholson said the police have taken a firm stance against gang violence in St. Catherine. Government to review legislative framework governing delivery and regulation of utilities. The government will shortly commence a review of the legislative framework governing the delivery and regulation of utilities. This according to Prime Minister Andrew Holness, is to ensure customers are protected, particularly during periods of emergency. The announcement comes against the background of the pace of electricity restoration by the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPSCO, in several communities in the aftermath of Hurricane Beryl. Reports surfacing indicate that several communities remain without power just over a month since the system's passage. Addressing Monday's launch of the Rebuild Jamaica Initiative at the Ministry of Labour and Social Security in downtown Kingston, Onus expressed dissatisfaction with electricity restoration efforts in some communities since the Category 4 system impacted the island on July 3. Go back to my office to meet with JPS. I have tried not to speak too much on this matter because JPS is a private company. They do, however, perform an indispensable and most important public function, which is regulated under law by an independent utilities regulator, which essentially takes the government out of the regulatory space but it does not take away the legislative authority of the government 
and what we are seeing in terms of the return of electricity to some areas of the country. It is not being done in a way for which the government is satisfied. In fact, we are deeply dissatisfied by the way in which electricity is being returned to some affected communities. And it does cause me to take a second look at the legislative framework which governs this new space of how utilities are delivered and regulated. It, it would appear to me that there needs to be tighter regulation and it falls on the legislators now to start to look at the instruments that govern how the utility operates and how the utility operator operates to ensure that the customer is protected, particularly in the time of an emergency and a disaster. And I want to just make that known publicly here JB, that that we'll process will begin Please remember shortly. to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.